Hello everyone, today's video is on uh, the digital forensics evidence collection process. So in the last video, I said that I'll be doing a video on autopsy in this my second video. But uh, since we haven't covered the first initial stages of the evidence collection, uh, I thought of covering the first stages so that we can move on to the acquisition and investigation phases more clearly uh, later on. So the first point that I'll be explaining is search authority. This is when someone who has more authority than you, for instance, like a magistrate or maybe a senior official uh, in, uh, in an organization, if it's a corporate investigation, uh, they have to issue a letter of authorization to search for a particular evidence and investigate it. This is the first phase of the process. The second phase is chain of custody or maintaining the chain of custody. So the chain of custody is a documentation or a paper trail that records everything that has happened to the evidence. From the moment we get hold of the evidence to the moment we present it in courts, everything that we've done or someone else has done with the evidence must be recorded. So the things that must be recorded in a chain of custody, the main uh, points that must be there are uh, who used the evidence, the time, date, uh, the task uh, done, and if the evidence was transported somewhere, uh, and where it was used, tested, and where it's stored must be recorded in the chain of custody. This is a sample chain of custody document that can be used. If we have documented every step of the evidence, it should show an unbroken link from the time we found the evidence to the time we present it. If we don't have it, for instance, if there's a particular time period that's, that's missing in the chain of custody, the opposite party can question us on certain missing areas. They can directly ask us what happened to the evidence at this time, where was the evidence and how do we know that uh, nothing was changed. So those type of questions can be asked by the opposite party and here we have to be able to give a proper reason or else the evidence can be discarded or uh, removed from that particular case. The third and again one of the most important points in digital forensic process is evidence storage or preserving the evidence. When an evidence arrives at the digital forensic lab, they should be investigated to verify that no tampering took place while it was transported to the lab. And all details including the serial numbers of the electronic devices must be verified uh, against the chain of custody before we actually uh, take it in. Evidence should be separately kept in a paper material such as paper bags or envelopes. It's recommended not to put them in plastic bags. Evidences must be fully dry before they are stored. And most evidences should be stored at room temperature. Digital forensic investigators are also responsible for correctly labeling all the evidences. And these labels must contain the case number, the collection location, date time, and any other identifying information. Uh, all evidences that are taken to the forensic lab must also be uh, logged in a separate document for later reference. So these are the initial steps that we have to do before we actually perform an investigation. Uh, next stage is the actual acquisition. So in the acquisition phase also we use different devices and different processors before we uh, go into the technical uh, part so this part will be explained in the next video so i hope this video was useful for you all thank you for watching